Professor Dave here. Let's learn some important formulas for trig functions. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. I know that you've probably had enough of trig functions for a while, but there are some important formulas to mention, so let's knock them all out in one clip. First, the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine, which are as follows. These tell us that if we want to find the sine or cosine of an angle that is the sum or difference of two other angles, we can find it in terms of the sine and cosine of those two angles. There are derivations for these, but they are a bit involved, so we won't go over them here. Instead, we will just learn how to apply them. For example, let's say we want to find the exact value for cosine of 5 twelfths pi. This is not part of the unit circle, but if we split it up into 3 twelfths pi and 2 twelfths pi, which reduce to quarter pi and a sixth pi, these are indeed angles for which we know precise sine and cosine values. So let's take this formula here and use quarter pi for alpha and a sixth pi for beta. The cosine of the sum of these angles, which is the 5 twelfths pi we want to know about, will be equal to the cosine of quarter pi times the cosine of a sixth pi minus the sine of quarter pi times the sine of a sixth pi. Ideally, we have these values memorized from the unit circle. If not, go back and check out my tutorial on this subject. Otherwise, we can just plug them in. They will be root 2 over 2 times root 3 over 2 minus root 2 over 2 times 1 half. After multiplying, that's root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4, which combine to give root 6 minus root 2 over 4. I know this isn't pretty, but it is an exact value, which can be more valuable than approximating with a calculator. The other three formulas work exactly the same way. We just take the angle of interest and express it as the sum or difference of two angles that are more convenient to evaluate. Also, if we place the sine of a sum over cosine of a sum, as well as the sine of a difference over the cosine of a difference, and do a little manipulation, we can get the sum and difference formulas for tangents as well, which look like this. Next, let's look at double angle formulas. These can be derived if we use the sum formulas and plug in the same angle for alpha and beta. Looking at cosine first, let's put a theta in the place of all the alphas and betas. Alpha plus beta becomes 2 theta, and that will equal cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So that's the double angle formula for cosine. If we do the same for sine, we get the sine of 2 theta equals sine theta cosine theta plus sine theta cosine theta. So that's 2 sine theta cosine theta. Lastly, for tangent, we get tangent 2 theta equals 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. These are easy to use. Let's say we know that the sine of an angle lying in quadrant 1 is 3 over 5. What will be the sine of twice that angle? Well, if we know two sides of the triangle, we know the third. It must be 4. So cosine theta must be 4 over 5. We just plug these into the formula, and we get 2 times 3 fifths times 4 fifths, which is 24 20 fifths. We should also note that there are multiple forms of the double angle formula for cosine, because cosine squared can be expressed as 1 minus sine squared, and sine squared can be expressed as 1 minus cosine squared. So here are the three forms for that, one being the original and two more given the two transformations we just mentioned. Now we can actually take these other two forms of the double angle formula for cosine and do something interesting. Starting with cosine 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, let's solve for sine squared theta. We bring this sine term over here, 
bring the cosine term over there, divide by 2, and we have something called a power reducing formula. It allows us to express sine squared theta in terms of cosine theta. Let's do the same thing for this other form. Bring the 1 to the other side, divide by 2, and we have cosine squared theta in terms of cosine theta. Combining them gives us 1 for tangent squared theta. These expressions are useful in their own right, especially in calculus, but if we continue along with them, we can do another interesting thing. Let's say that for each of these, we plug in x over 2 instead of theta. They will look more or less the same, except that all of the cosine 2 theta terms become cosine x. Then we can take the square root of both sides, and on the left, we just get sine, cosine, and tangent of x over 2. These are called half-angle formulas. They allow us to evaluate trig functions for smaller angles in terms of bigger ones with known values, and these plus or minus signs before the radical just mean that we have to look at the quadrant we are in to assign positive or negative values. For example, what is the sign of 1 12th pi? Well, that's not on the unit circle, but 1 6th pi is, which is twice this angle. So the sine of 1 12th pi is equal to the square root of 1 minus the cosine of a 6th pi over 2. The cosine of a 6th pi is root 3 over 2. So we have 1 minus root 3 over 2 over 2 inside the radical. Let's turn 1 into 2 over 2 so that we can combine these to get 2 minus root 3 over 2. Over 2 again, which means 2 minus root 3 over 4. We can take the 4 out of the radical, and we are left with the square root of 2 minus root 3 all over 2, which will be positive since we are in quadrant 1. Not the prettiest thing to see a root within a root, but that's the exact answer. The last formulas we will look at are the product to sum and sum to product. These are exactly what they sound like. For product to sum formulas, each term on the left is the product of two trig functions involving two different angles. On the right, we have trig functions involving sums and differences. As we said, there are also sum to product formulas where the sum or difference of two trig functions is expressed as a product. These are tricky to remember, so it's unlikely you'll have to memorize them. We just want to know they exist so that we can use them if we want to. Say we want to express sine 9x plus sine 5x as a product. We would put their sum, 14x, up here, and their difference, 4x, over here. We simplify and we get 2 sine 7x cosine 2x. These can sometimes be useful in verifying trickier identities. I think that's plenty of formulas for today, so let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, professordaveexplains at gmail.com.